Hi, I'm Lily Pebbles and this is my 500th video on YouTube. To celebrate, I thought I'd finally do a Draw My Life video and tell you a little bit about what's gone on so far. So the story starts before I was born, when a 30-something couple told their two daughters, Jojo and Carly, that they were expecting another baby. Me. My lovely sisters, who were 7 and 10, decided it was time to run away, but luckily they didn't get far. With their suitcase full of cuddly toys and snacks, I think they just about made it down the stairs. I was born three weeks late in 1987, in the bath in a hospital. Being three weeks late meant I was born with very dry skin, so the Indian midwife gave me a massage with almond oil, and I'm pretty sure this is where my love for pampering began. It's the people in my life that define me, so let's start with the two friends I've known since day one, Jake and Hannah. Hannah lived next door, and only one year older than me, she likes to take credit for my existence. To be fair, my mum did go around to meet her and thought, ooh, maybe I could just have one more. She was a very cute baby. Jake was my wingman. We'd do everything together, and I loved going on holidays with him. One night in Scotland, when we were only three and four, we stayed up past midnight dancing, jumping up and down with huge smiles on our faces. I grew up with a pet dog called Bruxy. She had really curly hair, just like me and my dad. And when she was little, she had to have her hip removed. I'll never forget that, because when she ran down the road in the wind, her leg would flap up in the air. That's supposed to be a leg, by the way. It was at nursery where I met my friend Debs. We used to lie to the teacher and somehow blag our way into the sandpit every day when we were meant to be taking turns with the other kids. We also used to steal the teacher's biscuits. We never went to the same school after nursery, but always stayed incredibly close. I was very lucky and I went on some amazing family holidays to France, America, Disney and I have some really special memories from a holiday in Antigua in the Caribbean when I was about six or seven. Now looking back I know it's a holiday we took after my grandpa died but at the time it was just a really fun holiday and I got to miss some days of school. One day we came across some washed up sea turtles and we helped get them back into the sea. Another day my sister got stung by a Portuguese man of war and it wrapped itself around her arms and for years after you could still see the marks under a UV light. So let's talk about big girl school, or primary school as most of us call it, and this is where I met my next group of friends. Keisha was in my class, green class, and Jenny was in blue class where all the older, more developed kids were, and SJ was in the class for slightly younger kids. We joke about how her class was still in nappies. We had so much fun together in school. We'd go back to each other's houses almost every day, laugh all the time, and we'd get into trouble in the playground. We had a gang called Bad, and we used to fall over on purpose to get plasters from the nurse's room. Plasters were like treasure to us. I was a shy girl, but not with my friends. We'd stand on the steps and perform Spice Girl songs. We'd challenge the boys and try and beat them at sports. Girl power was literally our life motto. We started a girls' football team, and our dad helped us get proper football kits for the school, and after training every Tuesday morning at 7am, we won the local league. We were so happy. I was always writing in my diary before bed. I kept a diary from the age of 10 to 16. It's so funny to read now, but I love that it has so many memories in there. I remember having some great birthday parties. My dad had a video camera and he loved filming all of our birthdays and holidays, so I've watched them back many times. One year I had an animal party where I had a python snake around my neck. Another year I had a swimming party and all my friends came, there were inflatables in the water. And one time I had an ice skating party and I asked all my friends to come dressed as punks. Secondary school was a weird experience for me. I never really felt like I fit in with the other girls, but I also wasn't great at the academic side of things, so I didn't really know where I fit in. I spent a lot of time in the art room, despite being terrible at drawing, clearly, and I loved being part of the jazz choir, where we performed proper concerts once a year in a big London theatre. 
I always took part in school musicals and I had a couple of lead roles too. I still spent a lot of time with my friends outside of school. By this time I'd met Gemma and we spent every summer on camp together. We have so many funny stories as we really went through the awkward teenage days together. This was my first experience of real bullying, not just teasing. I admired Gemma's strength and always stuck by her and tried to be the best friend I could. I couldn't wait for school to be over and I never wanted to apply for uni. My careers teacher convinced me to apply for one course at least, so I begrudgingly did, and although I didn't get the grades I needed, I still got in. So I had an unconditional offer to Birmingham City University and I knew I wanted to take a year out. After 18 years of studying, I wanted to take time out to explore the world, grow up a bit and meet new people. I worked in Gap Kids for four months to pay for my flight around the world and then set off in January. I travelled from London to Australia for a month and then to Thailand for a month and then visited Fiji and LA on the way home. I met loads of people, ate the best food, learnt how to surf, saw amazing sunsets, snorkeled and visited some of the best beaches in the world. I got back just in time to see my sister and brother-in-law get married in the south of France. So then it was time to start uni. I was so nervous and I didn't know one single person going to my uni, but my flatmates were really friendly and after a big cry I let my parents go home. I was really homesick for the first week and nearly dropped out, but I'm glad I stuck it out. On the first day we had to line up and register in a room full of desks. I sat next to a curly haired boy with glasses. He looked fully equipped with a pencil case, so when I realised I didn't have a pen, I asked him if I could borrow one. My curly hair and gap year tan must have confused him as he heard Spanish and replied with que? That was just the start of Rich and his richisms. Uni was great, I got stuck into my marketing, advertising and PR course and met loads of cool people. I built up my confidence presenting my work and I was excited to finally be doing well at something. Rich and I became official at our university's Christmas ball. It also happened to be my birthday and my friends surprised me with a cake. I was so drunk that I cried with happiness. So many cool things happened over those three years. My first nephew Bailey was born and I became an auntie. Hannah won a free trip to New York and took me. We had the best time. I moved in with my two friends Jay and JC in third year and never knew living with two boys could be so fun and easy. It was in that house that Jay helped me start my blog that I called What I Heart Today. Jay was the perfect creative partner and still to this day, six years on, even though he lives in Germany, he helps me develop my blog design. He was the genius behind my Lily Pebbles makeover. I left uni with a first, which was something I never ever thought could happen and I know I owe a lot to Rich for helping and supporting me throughout the three years. I immediately launched myself into work experience and I wanted to gain as much experience as possible and add it to my CV. I'd worked in production companies in between uni years, but now I wanted to try PR. I worked in PR agencies, phoning journalists and sending out products. I also landed myself an internship in the Selfridges head office, although it wasn't for me, so I went on to try something else. I worked for a bit in music licensing, finding music to place in adverts, and then I found a job opportunity in a beauty box company on Twitter. This was my first jump into the beauty world and I started as an intern and was only the third person to join the company, so I could really get stuck in. After a year and a half, I'd worked my way up to marketing manager, but by this point my blog was doing quite well and I was spending all my free time working on blog posts and videos for my relatively new YouTube channel. In 2012, my nephew Asa and my niece Honey were born. I literally love being an auntie. I was going to blogger events about once a week and it was at a lipstick launch that I first met Anna. She worked in a job that was pretty much the same as mine and we instantly bonded over our split work blog life. I never thought I'd meet someone in my 20s that was so similar to me. It was at this point I saw a job opportunity on Twitter at Gleam Futures. I went to meet the founder Dom in a small office. It was just him and one other person working there. After chatting for ages we both realised that working at Gleam wasn't for me but instead he encouraged me to stick with the YouTube thing and I think this was the final push I needed. I decided in October 2013 to leave my job and try blogging and blogging full time. I was living at home with my parents so it felt like a good time to do it. Rich was very nervous about the decision and no one really knew what I was thinking. I started working really hard on my blog and YouTube, putting all my time and effort into it. I set myself a three month goal and told myself I'd find a job if it didn't work out. 
My stats grew, I started making a good income and it was the first time I felt really passionate about something. Anna had also been contemplating leaving her job and when faced with an ultimatum she took on blogging full time and we began this crazy journey together. In summer 2015, Rich and I moved into our first place and at 28 years old, it's fair to say I was more than ready. We spent a month or so doing the place up and on August 14th, when I thought we were going to paint samples on the wall, Rich asked me to marry him in our new and empty home. Of course, I said yes. So that kind of brings me up to date. Working hard and enjoying what I do, planning my wedding and marrying my boyfriend of eight years. I'm forever grateful for the support from you guys and I genuinely feel like we have our own secret internet club that not everyone really understands. Who knows what the future holds, but life's been great so far. So let's keep going and see what happens. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.